Hey folks, here are OSMVTXU.com. You're watching our tech, tech battle crunch between the Barnes Noble Nook ebook reader generation one iteration with the ink screen versus the Barnes Noble color slash tablet version of their e reader. Now, the obvious difference between the two units is, of course, the tablet slash color version has a capacitive multi touch enabled touchscreen that allows the device to be sort of um, an Android tablet marketed as an ebook reader. It has some advanced functionalities as a web browser, the ability to download more applications, and of course, a color screen allows for better readability and usability um, as far as, you know, as a tablet for reading magazines, reading uh, kids books with color and animation and the such. And of course, it has a more powerful processor underneath the hood. Whereas the original version of the Barnes & Noble e-reader is more designed for reading print content and novels and books and long plays and text documents with its uh, built-in electronic e-ink screen, which is uh, better for conserving battery and better on the eyes. So we're having a more traditional e-reader be stacked up against a more modern counterpart. Taking a look at the design uh, foremost, both devices are pretty simplistic and easy on the eyes. Of course, the original came in, in white and the back was a soft touch material that is coated and has a grayish finish to it. Whereas the newer version has, of course, a silver counterpart and a silver rim. It's slightly thinner and a little bit smaller and easier to pocket, but the back also has that same soft touch material, although it's now dark, dark gray instead of being a light gray. Um, however, the uh, tablet version is a little bit more heavy. So uh, in terms of being more heavier and more weighty, um, if you're taking it with you, the regular version is a little bit easy, easier on the storage um, and you know, in your hands, it's a little bit lighter. So it's easier for reading content for long periods of time. As far as screen real estate is concerned, the original came with a 5-inch screen, whereas the smaller version here was really only for navigation purposes. So effective screen real estate is just 5 inches, whereas the newer model, of course, is a 7-inch screen, as are most smaller Android tablets. Um, page turns are also, instead of being on the original with physical controls, they are now completely software-driven based on using the touchscreen with the gestures. Um, we have to say that we were kind of disappointed with this. As an ebook reader, we would have liked to see Barnes & Noble still implement physical controls for that, uh, because the touchscreen, although good uh, to use that, it is a little bit of a smudge magnet, so it's going to make your device get really dirty very quick, and um, it takes a little bit of a more acclimation in terms of a learning curve and also uh, a longer time in order to swipe pages than just tap something easily with one hand. As far as dimensions, basically, you know, both devices are very similar. Um, if you're looking for portability, I would say that they are about even in terms of that department. Taking a look at the design, now the, e uh, the Barnes & Noble Color version does not have a user-removable battery, unlike the original. So if you are someone who likes to change batteries, um, if, e if your e-reader dies, um, it's unfortunately, the original is probably better for you. But the new version, of course, has the uh, support for hot swapping of micro SD card slots without having to remove the back cover, like the original had. Both devices offer Wi-Fi and, of course, a more advanced 3G functionality. The newer version has more memory um, compared with the original's 2GB of built-in storage. Taking a look at the uh, interface of both devices, if we turn the units on, we'll see that the actual color screen for the uh, for the actual you know color version of the e-reader is pretty vivid and nice and easy to read um that said it's it's a color screen and it's not like anything that you might expect with a regular ebook reader um and that's good in several cases it's easier on the eyes in terms of displaying cover art um your wallpapers and being more modern looking in general but uh as an ebook reading tool i still really lean on and suggest using an ebook an e-ink screen and this is really differentiating differentiating factor comes in. If you read, you know, a few occasional books here and there, if you do a lot of night reading, you know, with a, with an LCD screen, it's obviously going to be better. Or, you know, if you're using this for your kids to play magazine, like National Geographic or kids books, this is going to be your candidate. If you don't have a tablet out there and you're looking for an all-in-one device, this is going to be your candidate. But if you are looking for an e-reader and you just want to read print and text and books and you love, love, love books and traditional books, then you really have to really look at the original version of the e-reader, um, the Barnes & Noble Nook, rather than the color version here, because it's a lot less easier, it's a lot easier on the eyes to read something like this as opposed to this. Um, both uh, iterations, of course, offer the ability to change, you know, uh, different settings, such as night and day modes. They have an accelerometer on the newer one. You can, of course, still search up words and add dictionary and highlight and annotate. Um, of course, you can change the text type, but all those features can also be found on the original version as well. Now, just showing you how the original device works, um, we're going to power this device up, and you can see how the you know original version also had a uh, essentially a web browser as well, but it's far from being as powerful as the one found on the newer iteration. So if we're going to the web browser here, and we decide to go to Google, you know this is something that's fairly uh, rudimentary, but um, 
web browser speeds are a lot faster than on, on the newer version than on the original, as you might expect. But you can see we, we could nook, and if we try and do that, the same thing here. Um, well, we don't have Wi Fi turned on right now, but uh, it essentially is a lot more easier to use in terms of the QWERTY keyboard being larger. We have pinch to zoom, multi touch enabled support. So, uh, Things here and there like that, it just makes the unit some, somewhat easier to read, we have to say, than on the original version, which was uh, really just a purely beta version of the web browser, as you can see here, it's um, black and white. Um, again, if you're looking for something with color, then this is the one for you. If you're looking for something that's basic web browsing experience, not too much other functions, then um, you definitely should still consider the original Nook. As far as access to the original store is concerned, base, both devices are essentially the same. Um, the same basic navigation can be found. There is a, an application drawer on the bottom, and tapping the physical home key here will bring up a list of applications. Here we have just a list of icons, essentially the same thing. Um, something that the color version does do better than the original is actually a physical dedicated Nook button that's tactile and easy to press, whereas on this version we have a capacitive one that's very small and awkwardly placed and not very simple and easy to use. We have to tap multiple times to get the unit to register our touch, which is something that we liked that Barnes & Noble took our direction with and um, actually upgraded. Of course, this version offers MP3 playback as well, um, and essentially just a lot more storage options and a uh, newer version, more similar to tablet. Otherwise, games are still the same. We still have uh, Sudoku and um, chess on board as games, but of course we have more applications on here as well, so you can download email clients, Nook friends, Pandora Radio, Twitter, Facebook, and all those things that you might expect a modern tablet to do rather than just a regular ebook reader. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, if you are looking for something that, you know, might be an advanced ebook reader with that can read text um, and can read books, you can annotate, annotate stuff, but you are looking for a magazine experience, look at the color version. But if you are a huge, huge reader, you just love to read books and books and books, get the original version. It's better for your eyes, it's better for your battery life, um, it's, it's an easier device to carry around with you and won't distract you either with having too many other functionalities being on board. But you still have that wireless option there anyways. So thanks for watching this video comparison and review of um, the original Nook e-reader versus the color version. At the end of the day, again, this one is about even, I'd say it's a draw, because if you are someone who likes to read books, like I said, then this is the winner for you. If you're someone who looks, who's looking for a tablet or a color screen, um, or if looking for magazine support, then you are, will be able to look at this one. Otherwise, both devices are equally as uh, equally nice design and equally marketable from Barnes & Noble. Thanks for watching here at OSMBTXRoots.com and also our brother site at OS Tech News. This has been a battle crunch between the Barnes & Noble Nook Generation 1 e-reader versus the Barnes & Noble Color slash tablet.